The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. <laughs> and AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth. What's up, bra? It's been a day. We'll just we'll just <laughs> leave it at that. that. I hear it's that. Been a day. I definitely hear that. All right, man. Well, let's uh, let's not bore everybody with our nonsense and our boring work life and all that jazz. Let's get to football, man. So we've got 58 seconds left currently in the second quarter of the Thursday night games. Titans, Jags, another juggernaut matchup here. Uh, Dripping with sarcasm, if you can't tell. Um, Yes. Started off kind of hot, actually. Jags scored on their first two drives. One to O'Shaughnessy. And then the other one to DJ Shark. Do, 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 do. My daughter would love me for that one. Um, yes, indeed. <laughs> I almost all the, named all the dads one and moms of... listening right now are like, yep, yep, I totally get it. I almost uh, named one has... of my teams after that, but <laughs> decided not to. Yeah, prob- probably a good call. Um, so, yeah, we got um, still 14 nothing. Game's kind of slowed down to the defensive battle like we thought now at this point. Let's keep you updated. Not that it's live or nothing when you're listening, but it's still fun to kind of chime in and just give our little reaction to the plays if we see anything good. So we got some interesting news this past week, man. Uh, future possible Hall of Famer Eli Manning benched in favor of Daniel Jones. I'll be honest, man, this happened a lot sooner than I thought it was going to. Um, you know, what's your quick thoughts on on how this impacts the offense, uh, positive, negatively? You know, what, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I, I didn't see it happening this early. Uh, I will say that. But I think everybody saw it happening at some point this year, even though I believe uh, maybe it was Keith that was telling us that uh, – Somebody in the the you know Giants office was well, the claiming the entire front office, including the coaches, were saying he wasn't going to play this year. They yeah, sit him all year. Uh, no, you're not. I mean, it, that's just typical yeah, coach terrible. speak crap that we get all the damn time. So I never mm-hmm. take anything that they say for you know for what it actually is that they're saying. Um, you always kind of have to take it with a grain of salt, but. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I think it'll be interesting. Um, I mean, they obviously liked the kid. They went out and grabbed him sixth ahead of, you know, a handful of other quarterbacks. So, who knows? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think it's going to get any worse. Could it? I mean, Eli was pretty bad. Um, so... Why not? Give the kid a shot. Could get, you know, spark some life in the offense. You know, it... My issue is that he's going to run the ball a little bit more, so possibly it hurts Sterling Shepard when he's healthy and Golden Tate when he's back and Saquon and things like that because, you know, he will gain some yardage on the ground. But on the flip side of that, his legs can keep drives alive, which means more possibilities for Saquon and et cetera, you know, right? So time will tell. I'm not... I'm not eagerly going after any Giants at this point. It uh, wasn't earlier this year either, except for Saquon, obviously, because he's just going to yeah. be a, a, a target hog. Um, so, and he still will be. Um, I meant, well, let's get let's get rolling here with uh, the the usual. Uh, did I, no, there it goes. Losing my stuff, man. Keith is not here, so I'm having a two two jobs at once here, but. Uh, let's do some beer of the week. Mm, beer. Hi, right, man. What you got? Hopefully, you can make up for your uh, total crap from last week. 
<laughs> well, I, I thought that I could with uh, a, a, a local brew from Duclaw, um, but it turns out that I am uh, illiterate and I cannot read <laughs> any cans that I have picked up lately. Um, I saw pumpkin and that was it. And I love trying to get as many pumpkin beers as possible. Decided that this one was one I was going to get and it's a pumpkin stout. Uh, and I, I'm not a big stout fan. I took one sip and put it on top of the beverage fridge and decided to grab the Sierra Nevada IPA Hop Hunter uh, or Hop oh, Hunter right. IPA. Uh, it's brewed with farm distilled hop oil. Um, it's just a really good, smooth beer. I'm trying to find 6.2 alcohol, so not super heavy. But it's real, like, light, crisp, easy drinking. Uh, I mean, I feel like I could easily put a six-pack of these down and then, you know, sit on the couch for a few hours. And fall asleep. Um. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, indeed. so Sierra Nevada is getting a lot of love tonight because mine is a Sierra Nevada Hazy Little Thing IPA. Nice. Uh, I think you've had this one before. And uh, I finally, I, I have, before. yes. And uh, I saw I it, it and almost show. grabbed it again. Yeah. Uh, I gave it a three and a half on untapped. Uh, not awesome, but not bad. Like that's kind of my, you're good to drink beer, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Uh, I think it's a, a lower IPA and uh, I can't tilt. There's kind of no information on the can anyway. So I'm not going to tilt it because it's super full. I just, I just popped it open. But yeah, I mean, it's just a, I don't know. I'm trying to find the, the percentage. It's not on the can. For some reason, they don't post it on the can. All right, cool deal. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a hazy. I've actually been starting to get into the hazies a little bit more. Um, the first few yeah. I had, man, were very good, so I think I kind of was turned off on them. Uh, but the you know, I've been picking them up because I'm just trying to try everything new I can, and these are the last ones that got left. So they're, they're good, man. So this is a, a good... A good one. I, I, I would recommend this one for sure. So, all right, man. Let's move on to our news and notes coming out of week two into week three. And, man, what a week two it was. Um, obviously, we got to start with the quarterback injuries. I mean, I don't know which one's bigger, right? Big Ben out for the year. Or Drew Brees with thumb surgery and out for at least six weeks. They're saying he's like ta targeting for six weeks, but we'll see, man. Um, let's start with Brees. So Brees is out six weeks. Um, you know, I think most people thought Bridgewater was going to be the guy, you know, because he's like the quarterback, right? And Taysom Hill is just kind of a guy that comes in, runs some crazy plays, plays wide receiver, plays some running back, whatever he does, right? Um, does the wildcat crap. Um, but Bridgewater did not have a good showing on Sunday after he came in for Breeze. He was like 17 for 30 or something like that. For like, I forget how many yards. No touchdowns. It wasn't great. And... Uh, Sean Payton has come out and said in a press conference because everybody just started asking him questions, assuming that Bridgewater was the number, like the number one, and Taysom Hill was the number two. And he corrected him and said, You're assuming Taysom is number two. Yeah. Whoa. All right. Um, I mean, what, what do you think, man? Like, Bridgewater or Taysom, who's starting this game for real? I think Bridgewater will start, and then uh, within the first series, Taysom Hill will get in. I, I think that's – Peyton's saying he wants to do two quarterbacks. Okay, yeah. fine. He's going to do every other play as a different quarterback. Yeah. Watch. I, 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 I agree, would not man. be surprised by that one bit. Yeah. Um, I, I don't legitimately think he's going to do that. But I wouldn't be surprised to do you know every other series or – just see what happens. I mean, he's going to put Bridgewater in first, let him go out, see what he can do, um, and see how well he can hand the ball off to Kamara for three straight runs. 
uh, and then he's going to put Hill in, and Hill's going to do a QB draw, um, you know, and then they're going to do uh, put put Bridgewater back in, do a flea flicker, and <laughs> Thomas will will miss it because it'll be grossly overthrown. So that's the first series it ends in a punt. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I did read that Breeze is looking to get a second opinion um, on everything. And, and what I saw was six to eight weeks, but I mean, I, I don't know. It's just another, another chink in the armor of my Scott fishbowl team. I have horrendous luck. Um, thanks to luck and his retirement. I now lost breeze. I now have Bridgewater and Taysom Hill. Um, and I still have, out which one of those to start. Uh, I, I started Taysom. I, that's a good question, though. Can we update our lineup through Sunday? Or does it lock uh, yeah, today? I think, my, I think my fantasy league lets you lets you update mid. I haven't mid. tried it yet. I just know that everything yeah. has to be submitted by Thursday because they, of no, tonight's they don't. game. Well, only if you're going to lock players in for Thursday. Oh. Okay, well then yeah. I misinterpreted that way off, but yeah, so, I've uh, I've been so nervous about you know <laughs> missing nah, my first pick nah, nah, you're and good, man. not not submitting a lineup. So nah, you're, you're good. Um, it's in, but so okay, so let let's move on with this conversation. So, what does Bridgewater and Hill? What does this do to Kamara and Thomas? And I mean, coming from a Kamara owner, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I'm straight up worried. Like, I don't know what is going to happen with these guys. I mean, this offense clearly is not going to be the same without Drew Brees. No. Uh, I mean, I think that I'm I'm not as worried about Kamara. I think he's just too dynamic of a player. Um, and, and again, it doesn't take much to hand the ball off. Um, and Taysom... You know, he, he plays all over the field as it is. So he's kind of everywhere anyways that I think he can get out in space a little bit and allow Kamara time to get out in his own space. Um, so I think with him in there, it helps. You know, and you got to remember too, Bridgewater was, I want to say he was a Pro Bowl quarterback. Um, you know, he, he's got the talent. He's just never really been able to shake the injury issues enough to really play. Um, and, and he's always been a backup since then. So if he starts getting a little comfortable in the offense, I think that'll help. I am worried about Thomas, especially as an owner of, of him. Um, and I, I'll get into that more later, but I, I just think that he's the one that's going to, going to suffer here. Could be good for Jared cook. You know, if he can get open and in, in some short routes. Um, but Kamara, I'm not too worried about. Not yet, at least. Uh, I hope you're right, man. I've got Kamara in a couple of places. I do not have Thomas anywhere, so I do hope you are right. Um, Big Ben, out for the year. It's Mason Rudolph time. Uh, yeah, man. Same question. I mean, what does this mean for guys like James Conner and Juju and McDonald and whoever the second wide receiver ends up being? Because uh, they've all been pretty <laughs> trash at this point. Yeah, um, Washington and Moncrief have been well, garbage. Moncrief has got the dropsies, and uh, yeah, Washington just hasn't done a whole lot. So we'll see what happens. But I mean, what's I mean, your it, what's your thoughts the same on time, these supporting cast guys, right? I mean, at the same time, Big Ben really hasn't done anything either. He was absolutely decimated well, by New England. In the first game, and then, he, and then, the and then he gets hurt in the second or... game. So, I, I, yeah, I get it. But, I mean, I, I, I think they'll be okay. I, I don't. I, I definitely would drop them down a notch or two. Um, I didn't have any interest in Connor this year anyways. I just bought too much into the him splitting time with uh, – you know, Samuels and possibly Benny Snell. So I don't own him anywhere. Um, actually, I don't think I own Juju anywhere either uh, or McDonald, but I just, I, I, I don't think that these guys, at least Juju and Connor, they, they are talented players. So 
it's going to, you know, I think they're going to rely on the run a little bit more here. Uh, same deal until Rudolph really gets comfortable running this offense. And, you know, the difference here is that he's, he's the guy for the rest of the season. I mean, Ben's done. Uh, yeah. I mean, he very well may be done with football. Um, I, I don't know though. So I think Rudolph obviously is going to have a, a, a longer learning, you know, curve, if you will, not really curve, but he's going to have more time to figure things he's out. Have a longer leash is what I think you're trying to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, you really don't know what the leash is on Bridgewater or or Hill until there we is see no what they leash, do. Man. It's straight up yeah. going to be a revolving door. I mean, I think you're right on that one. So it's yeah. really crazy. Like those guys are not people you can. Those are not quarterbacks you can start in in your your standard leagues. Yeah, um, two quarterback leagues you might get you might have to get desperate and do it. Super flex leagues you might have to be desperate and do it. Kind of like Scott Fishbowl. I mean, the, the the we'll get to that later. But the fab bids for those guys was nuts. Worse for Mason Rudolph. I mean, I I rolled the oh. dice and did not go crazy on him. Yeah, and I needed to because I own Big Ben and uh, paid the price for it. So I'm going to be struggling. Um, well, and that's the worst part. I was telling myself, oh well, I could have taken Ben over Breeze, but you know, I went I went with Breeze because whatever. And then Ben went like four or five hurt. picks like, later. This is crazy year. Like, oh, I know. Drew Breeze of all like this is how crazy the quarterback injuries are this year. Drew Brees got hurt, ladies and gentlemen. This never happens. I mean, this is nuts. So another quarterback injury, Cam Newton, man, in a walking boot. Like, we all kind of suspected, and it was like rumors and uh, that Cam Newton was hurt. And now he's in a walking boot. He's not. He didn't practice Thursday. That's today. Uh, it's looking like it's Kyle Allen time. You know, who knows how long this is going to last, but let's just focus on week three, right? Uh, they're against the Cardinals this week, I believe. You know, what's the, you know, what's the impact on guys like McCaffrey and DJ Moore and Samuel and, you know, Hey, Olsen had a great game last week. So let's throw him in the mix. Apparently he is not dead after all. So, you yeah, know, you know, what are we thinking they can do? Remember, Kyle Allen came in toward the end of last year for a game and threw, I think, two touchdown passes. Yeah, a solid I game, dude. Too, yeah. So, um, you know, can I, he keep that magic alive for another game at least? I think so. I, I want to say that he's going to kind of have the, like, surprise factor coming into it because – we really don't know at this point if he's starting or if Cam's going to be healthy enough. I'm going to say he's probably not if he's in a walking boot. Um, usually you don't just wear that for three days, take it off and run around on a football field. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think there'll be a little bit of a surprise factor there because you can game plan for Cam, but they they don't have tape on this guy. So, you know, it's going to be a, a new face coming in you can try to game plan around all the weapons he has um, and try to slow them down somehow in order to slow Allen down. But, right. you know, I think CMC really needs to get going. He needs a good bounce back game here. Um, he, he looked miserable last week, uh, you know, and that that's part of because Cam was injured, but, mm -hmm. you know, we got to give some credit to Tampa Bay's defense. Um They've been decent, surprisingly. Yeah, <laughs> better than the offense, I feel like. Well, yes. uh, or better better than, you know, uh, Winston, at least. That's not really hard to do, though. I feel like Andrew Luck's been better than Winston this year <laughs> on the football field. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, hey, they're both getting booed, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think, I think again, it's, it's kind of a wait-and-see approach, but I'm – not overly excited about anybody on this team aside from CMC, hopefully having a rebound week. Yeah. I'm kind of with you. Uh, and, and mainly just because, you know, Cam really has looked pretty bad. I mean, I, I know last week that TJ Moore and Samuel ended up having decent fantasy games, you know, uh, but Cam didn't, and if you really watch that game, he missed 
some really open throws to those guys. So if Kyle Allen can at least replicate that against a Cardinals defense, which really isn't good, then I don't think those guys suffer. And if Kyle Allen can be at least moderately better because he's healthy and his throws are not affected by an injury, then those guys might actually get a boost, which is crazy to think. So I'm not as worried about the, the, the Panthers players as I am, like, the Saints and the uh, Steelers. So I with you. Yeah. Um, last injury, obviously, we know Sam Donald was out with Mono. Uh, Trevor Simeon came in, tore ligaments in his ankle off that pretty uh, nasty-looking hit. Um, nice. Luke Falk, never heard of this guy, came in. <laughs> Uh, it's it's now his time, man. It's 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 his back. It's his uh, it's his offense until Donald returns. You know, Donald's talking about he's going to come back week five. Ah, it seems a tad early for Mono, man. Like I've heard some pretty bad things about Mono. Never had it, but I've I've heard like, man, it just wipes you out. You lose a lot of weight. Like it's just nasty. So yeah. we'll see. Um, basically, uh, Le'Veon Bell is. The man in PPR links because he's going to get 15 check down catches at this point. Nobody else you are starting at all unless you have a terrible team or you're in like a 20 team league. It's bad. So, yeah, I I mean, you almost got to feel bad for Simeon. That's like, <laughs> I just can't catch a break wherever he goes. I know, man. But dude, he looked it's... awful the first couple oh, yeah. series he, he played. He did not I think look they good. had negative four passing yards for the first like oh, three God. series he played and then he finally got hurt and it was just like yeah he man, was just like, like all right i've had enough uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, hey, done. I'm out you guys, like you guys are gonna come, pay me regardless. come at me hard <laughs> all right try not to hurt me too much but just come at me hard yeah man and then he's on the ground the guy's like did i do okay he's yeah. like uh yeah i think so i'm not you got a penalty out of it that was like the most positive yards you got all, 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 <laughs> yeah, the whole seriously. game <laughs> 15 yard penalty that flag <laughs> negates so my he, negative four passing negative four, yards. So I yeah, appreciate man, he got positive it. 11 yards the entire game. Good for him. <laughs> We're assholes. All right. <laughs> Round of applause. All right, man. Let's. I want to touch back on some of these running back splits. So you know, we, we did this last week, and, and it's that it has to be done. I feel like at this point because there's so many backfields that are just a complete mess and you just don't know what to do you know so obviously big one right the biggest one the Rams because Todd Gurley is still there and playing so I'm looking at the stats here and he got 45 total snatch which was about 64 to 65 percent he rushed the ball 16 times to Malcolm Brown who almost split last week with him as far as carries yeah. Um, Malcolm Brown. So, like, the snap counts and percentages were about the same as last week, but the carries was 16 to 6. And the big news is that Gurley got in the end zone. That's yep. the big one. So, you're looking good here, but Gurley's still not just dominating. So, I think all the worries that people had earlier, that, you know, in the before the season started are coming to fruition. I mean, like, it's. This is what we worried about. He was going to get a reduced role, and he was not going to be that dominant guy. You know, he was getting like 20 touches, if not 25 touches a game sometimes, between passing and rushing, multiple touchdowns. This is not happening anymore. And I don't see any game at this point where it's going to happen. What, do you, what about you? Yeah, I, I think at this point it's pretty safe to say that this is probably now Gurley's offense back. Um, you know, Brown was dealing with, uh, I can't remember if it's an ankle injury now. I, I updated the chart earlier, so put some notes in there about that. But I, I originally had him at the top on goal line above Gurley because he got the two touchdowns in week one. Well, not anymore. So, um I mean, just the snap percentage alone, you know, going two thirds to one third is is telling. And I think yeah, that dude, they, it was always like, I mean, Gurley always got like almost ninety, like he dominated. Oh yeah, and that's what it was. So, so that's what I was saying. Like, 
the fact that he slipped to like a second round pick in a lot of leagues, I think is pretty warranted at this point. Like this is this is what he's gonna be. It's not gonna get any better than this. And so a second round pick for a guy who's getting sixty five percent of the carries is probably I mean, fine. Yeah, I, I think he he's he hasn't exceeded his draft value yet. Um, mm-hmm. but I think that he can. Uh, it's just a matter it's a matter of them main, managing him correctly. And he needs to stay healthy. I mean, that, that's the most important thing. I, he's had important. multiple knee surgeries and injuries in his career, um, you know, back through college. So it's not like it's a surprise, but he's been so worked in the NFL, too, the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. You know, that takes a toll. I mean, running backs get used and abused as it is anyways. So... I, I'm not surprised to see the snap count where it is. Um, and when you have talented guys behind you, hey, let them, let them take some of the beating off your shoulders. I mean, they could break one and, and take it to the house just like you can. So, you know, not saying yeah. that Brown is the same talent level as Gurley. No, but definitely not. When, when no. Gurley's healthy, he is, you know, as we've seen for a couple of different years in a row now, he is – the best running back in the league when he's healthy. So, yeah, especially in that McVay offense. But, um, yeah, so the Bills is another one that we want to touch on here. And this one's really interesting to me. So, you know, if you look at it, you're thinking Frank Gore told 19 carries to Devils, Devin Singletary's six. Um, you know, but Frank Gore was only on the field. For you know, fifty nine percent of the snaps to Singletary's thirty two. So, uh, okay, fine. And, and then you also go into okay, you know, if you just look at the box score and you know what the result was, you think okay, Singletary got hurt, right? So you're thinking, oh well, that has to be why. No, no, no. Singletary got hurt late in that game, like fourth quarter late in that game, from what I understand. I did not watch it. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, I didn't see much on it, but. Yeah, but so the fact that Frank Gore saw three times as many carries as Singletary, that's crazy, dude. Um, I mean, what you know, what's your, what's your what's your thoughts on this, especially now that you know Singletary is dealing with that hamstring injury? I mean, I mean, I think this is this is Gore's backfield at we, this point. Um, you know, they may be looking at it like, oh, damn, we gave up Shady and this is what we're dealing with now. I doubt it, but you know, they still got TJ yelled in there too. Um, who saw nothing by the way. Zero. I know he, he's zero been, receiving, zero he's running, been absolutely, nothing. I don't understand reduced like, to nothing. Um, it's always been solid, like as a, as a receiving back, like I just don't understand. I mean, they even gave Frank Gore two, two receptions and two targets. Like that's crazy. Um, yeah. The one thing I'll say though too is if you're looking at the box score here, and again, I'm about to apologize up front here. Like I, I had you know son's birthday this week, so I didn't you know I kind of fast forwarded to red zone as much as I possibly could to catch as much as I could. Uh, so there was a lot I missed, I'm sure this weekend. But you know, so box scores can lie, you know, pretty easily. But you know, Devin Singletary did rush for 57 yards off of six carries, which is pretty nuts. So. I still think he is the clear best back they have, but they just trust Gore so much more, it seems like. And that's that's valuable in fantasy. So do you start Gore over Singletary still? You know, they both were healthy. Do you start Gore over Singletary right now because they seem to trust him more and give him more work? Yeah, I I will. I think I do too, man. I mean, Frank Gore's... One of the leading sixty-eight years old, but still charging along, man. He's I mean, he's <laughs> yeah. I mean, he just he's a model of consistency that he's always on the field. You know, he he plays well. He knows what he's doing when he's out there. He's a smart player. Um, so I don't see why they wouldn't trust him. Um, yeah, I mean, they brought him in this year so why why would you bring a guy in if you don't trust him um to at least help your team 
Yeah. And obviously they drafted Singletary to be, you know, the next franchise back. Um, or in their minds, I would say that that's what they were thinking. But I mean, got to go with you. Got to go with old faithful here. Yeah, and again, especially at this point, Singletary hurt. So you know, it's obviously Frank Gore. I dude, I snatched him up on waivers on a couple of leagues because my, you know, I just the last guy that was stashing on my bench were terrible. So why not? Yeah. All right, moving on to the Bears again, just a total mess. Um, slight, slightly better than the Eagles again. All right, or, or slightly worse than the Eagles now at this point. Uh, but the Eagles are yeah. kind of a joke uh, when you know for fantasy, but the Bears shifted completely from Week One, which we all hoped was going to happen. David Montgomery, like if you look at snap counts and things like that, you know, obviously it, it still went Montgomery, Cohen, Davis. Um, Montgomery saw what is it, twenty-seven snaps, Cohen twenty-three, Mike Davis fifteen, which was a shift, and then the carries, the carries is what screams out to me. David Montgomery saw eighteen, Cohen's four, which was up from zero, <laughs> and then Mike Davis saw three. So we finally see the heavy David Montgomery usage that we all wanted. And he did score. So that is great. Um, are, are we are we hoping this keeps? I mean, he still only had 3.4 yards per carry. So that's not good. Uh, not getting anything in the backfield. or out of the, You know, he saw, well, he did see three targets, only caught one. But, I mean, that's... That's a knock on Trubisky, who's just been absolutely atrocious. But uh, that's not yeah. what we're talking about. But I mean, so I don't know. Quick thoughts on this backfield, man. Like, I still am not sure I to truly trust it. But you know, are you ready to trust Montgomery? I I think so. Um, I mean, I don't love this situation as it is, anyways. But of the three guys, I, I feel like he's gonna be the guy so you know we need to we need to treat him like he is and see what happens um cohen is definitely going to be more of your your pass catching guy and he's just a dynamic athlete as it is so you know i'm not surprised to see the snap count or snap percentage you know as close as it was between the two and then have davis kind of picking up the slack at the end there Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Tarek, uh, Tarek's not a, a running, running back. <laughs> so I, I think that the 18 to four and three and got to give it to Montgomery. He's going to be their go-to. This, this has to be what it's going to be going forward. I would think too. Uh, off to Denver, where we're still getting a pretty even 50-50 split here. Um, Royce Freeman actually was on the field more this game. Uh, Lindsay, yeah. just, just slightly, but it is so 50-50. I mean, these guys like flex plays at best, right? I mean, I don't know what to do with them at this point. It's a shame, because I, I yeah, really thought yeah. Lindsay was just going to carry, was just going to you know, keep it going from – from last year and, and the Denver coaching staff was going to just let him ride it as long as he could. But they're, they're, uh, they're using Freeman a lot. He saw seven, seven reception or seven targets too. They both did. Yeah. I, uh, super 50, 50. It's so crazy. Uh, it's, it is. And, and I think that's the problem. Um, I, own Lindsay in a couple of leagues and have a handful of shares in him and thought that he was going to be the guy again. And he's really not. So he's been kind of disappointing. Uh, he did play better this past week compared to week one. So that was nice to see, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's kind of a crapshoot, whichever one of these guys you want, if either one, it, you're not putting them above flex at this point until one of them just breaks off and, and goes. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to do. Um, the last offense we want to highlight here is your Eagles. Um, you know, Sanders saw more of the snaps, but the, the, the carries were still pretty split between him and Howard. Um, 
I'm just, I mean, I, I, it's kind of like with with the Bears here. Like, I'm just waiting for them to figure out that, hey, you guys need to give this ball to Miles Sanders a little bit more. You have to, yeah. man. He's just – I mean, neither one are really performing. But, like, it's hard to get into – you see this with so many running backs. First, like, five, six, seven carries – Nothing, 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 nothing. So you get like a three average, right? And then boom, like carry 17 because you gave them the ball a million times, bust off for like 40 yards, and their average goes way up. And they look like they're a good running back because, oh, guess what? They really are. Yeah. Miles Sanders is, God, he's so he's so much better, dude. Uh, I, I'll at least say this. They're at least giving they're at least giving him the targets out of the backfield a little bit more than Howard. You know, four to one so far, at least last week. I mean, maybe you have your ear to the ground more with the Eagles than I do. I, I'm not truly I'm not totally like looking at their beat raiders of that lately, but any any hope that Sanders is gonna run will run away with this sooner rather than later. I think so. I, I think they want him to be the guy. Um, you know, again, uh, they, they didn't bring Howard in because they don't trust him. They don't think he's a talented back. I mean, for whatever reason, Eagles are just stockpiling running backs with everybody they had. They let Smallwood go and now he's with the skins, mm-hmm. but Sproles, uh, I mean, Sproles had two touches in this game. Yeah. Um, I mean that's honestly that's they should be. pretty sad, I, and it goes it, it speaks to how he's going to be used, you know, and how it's going to be a game flow thing for him. So I don't know if you can really trust him this week. Maybe a little bit more because of the injuries they're facing with Alshon and and Djax. Um, but true. Yeah, I, I mean, true. aside from that, I I don't. I mean, Corey Clement is. I, he's a complete afterthought. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it's got to be Sanders. Um, I I hope that they. I'm I'm okay with the fifty fifty if it keeps them both healthy and they're both productive. But neither one is productive. Right now, neither one is so. doing anything. So yeah, that's gotta, that's part of the problem. You got to get one of them going. So just a yeah. couple other thoughts here. Um, we're looking at the 49ers, and that, that's sort of a, a, a random split here, too, between three guys now. Um, but, dude, all of them were productive. All of them are good. Um, all of them were really good. They were all good. I mean, Mostert, you know, it was Mostert, 13 carries, Breida, 12, Wilson, 10. Uh, Wilson got the two touchdowns in through the running game. Muster got the, the receiving touchdown. Yep. And if you look at the snap counts, man, it's Moster's backfield. Uh, as much as they, you know, tout Brita as the starter. Yeah. Moster's the one you want, man. And I'm starting him everywhere. I've picked him up. I really am this week. I think he's the guy, man. Yeah. Um, the other one is kind of interesting is the Bucks. You know, we all were kind of like, oh, man, Ronald Jones got like, 11 carries or whatever it was, 13 carries for 75 yards in week one. He looked like a monster, and I was all the lower, and I was like, man, apparently it's like game time, he turns it on. Like, right? Nope. Do not Cue trust. the SFB <laughs> team. Ooh. I have Ronald Jones. <laughs> 23 carries for Barber. <sighs> man. Four for Jones. Like, they just decided they don't want to use Jones this week. They, they what didn't. What on earth happened? Um, like they didn't even give it a chance to build off the of week one, which was good. No. Yeah, he had a good week, and yes. and it's disappointing to see that big of a turnaround. But I mean, frankly, looking at this this chart that that we have from Fantasy Life app, they, I mean, there's been a lot of that. There's been a lot of you know back and forth movement on this chart. We've already talked about some of them. Yep. Um. You know the next, the next Seattle. Yeah, that was the next one we have listed. Theirs was the same way. I mean, Carson was pretty far and away the guy in week one. Penny was an afterthought, but you know here you're looking at forty-three to twenty-six um, in the uh, 
the snap count. total snaps, you know, so the percentage was was split. But uh, I mean, Carson only out carried Penny by five carries, fifteen to ten. Yeah. So and Penny scored. Yeah, I mean that's that sucks for Chris Carson. <laughs> Just like I was not happy, dude. He he got a couple places, he so. had such a rise at the end of the off season, you know, in in the drafting season, if you will, from when we started talking about stuff in July to even early August, he was mm-hmm. like starting to climb, and then he was going third, early third round in most of my and leagues I that were drafting. With it. It, it was, I, and I was fine with it too. And I, I don't own him anywhere. And I was pissed because I wanted him to fall to me and he just <laughs> wouldn't do it. I still think he'll be fine. I think he's still going to overall be the guy. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things, man. Like, you know, they're, they're going to try to keep Penny involved. It's just, yeah, I, I, I still don't know how much I truly believe in Penny, but um, yeah. Yeah, so we, we need to move on. So, yeah. Uh, other running back news CJ Anderson for the Detroit Lions was cut. It is now Ty Johnson time as the backup. This guy, man, was getting a bunch of hype late in the preseason. Wasn't really drafted anywhere because, I mean, there was still CJ Anderson. So, like, why would you draft him, right? And, and, yeah. and you know, I didn't anywhere. He was always one of those I guys I clicked either. on, you know, watch lists, right? Um, Maybe not the best comparable, but let's be honest. It's the Miami Dolphins, so you cut him a little slack. Comparable player from player profiler is Kenyon Drake. And I think we all think Drake is talented. He's just on a really crappy team. Bad, so yeah. let's be I mean, real about this. So. Decent comparison. Drake yeah. was was solid. Yeah. So he was and good, still man. could be if yeah. he had just on a, better a team. team that cared about being in the NFL. Yeah. Um, he doesn't, though. No, I, not at all. So um, be on the lookout for Ty Johnson. You know, if, if you're just looking for guys to, you know, as as Richard likes to say, spec ads, you uh, go out and reach for Ty Johnson, man. You could do a lot worse at the bottom of your bench and just see what happens. Um, yeah. He actually had one less carry than Kenyon Drake, uh, who had six on the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. I mean, that's... Uh, no, it's, that's it's bad, man. Bad. And then uh, other quarterback news, if you're really interested, Josh Rosen's getting the start in the Dolphins. And as uh, I, I, I told told Mark I was going to steal this from him today, he said, he said, uh, uh, he said that's like changing your waiter on the Titanic. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was hilarious. I, I was like laughing when I saw this in the middle of like in my cube. I'm just like cracking up and people look at that and I'm like, I'm sorry. I apologize. So, um, so I got to give him credit for that, but it's still a funny line, man. I, I, I had to use it. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, dude, literally nothing to analyze there. It's just, I, I only said it because I wanted to see Mark's line. Um, yeah. Other injury news, because we have a lot of it. Devin Singletary, we already mentioned, hamstring. Um, so, obviously, it's going to help Gore out. You know, TJ Yeldon's a possibility if you're desperate. David Njoku, um, out with a broken, well, yeah, broken wrist. He's getting second opinions at this point, trying to see if he needs surgery or not. You know, I'm of the opinion that if he gets surgery, that he's out for the year. There's no timetable yet for his return. Yeah. But um, Demetrius Harris is the guy. I mean, he's been he's been kind of a blocking tight end for them, so I'm not really sure he's somebody you really want to go out and reach on. But a lot of people have a tight end problem, so maybe sure if you're (laughs) if you're just trying to roll the dice on somebody, why not? Um. Yeah, I mean, it could be interesting if, um, you know, Cleveland decides to continue on their, their off-season run of acquiring all the talent. Don't be surprised if they give Tampa Bay a call and go after uh, either O.J. Howard or Cameron Brait. 
Ugh. Tampa's not really using either one of them, so no. might Dude, as well I get would What do you need him for? I would love it if Cleveland somehow got OJ Howard, but that would be that would be something. Because I own OJ Howard uh, in three of my nine leagues, and I am crying on the inside right now because of it. Yeah. Michael Gallup out two to four weeks after having his meniscus trimmed. That is obviously way better than having it repaired. Um, <laughs> Cobb and Devin uh, Smith. Uh, 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 Darius Geis. Shed a tear for you, man. I feel bad for you. I just want you to play football, man. Um, so Randall Cobb. And, you know, Randall Cobb already had a role. He was the slot guy. So he doesn't like, he's not a replacement for Gallup. But I think the targets go up for him. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. Um, but the guy that replaces him is Devin Smith. And he was a a big, you know, deeper league type spec ad type of guy uh, who, who people went out for. Um, I don't think he's anybody I'm starting. Although this week they play the Dolphins, so maybe. <laughs> um be a lot worse. A huge game. <laughs> if there's a game he's going to do it, it's this one. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, this week, he's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, the the Kansas City Chiefs have some running back issues, man. Uh, LaShawn McCoy has an ankle injury. I initially wrote down that he practiced, but then something popped up, and I forgot to follow up on it, uh, that he did not practice on Wednesday, but he may. He was looking to see if he was going to practice today. I don't know if you can look that up real quick because my computer is just dragging, dragging ass right now. Um, but Damian Williams has not practiced yet. And what? Yeah, shady, shady practice. He did. Uh, I believe limited. Okay, so um, yeah. Today. The expectation is that McCoy is going to play, and right now Damian Williams, it's looking like he's not going to play. Uh, he's got a knee injury. Dude, everybody who drafted Darwin Thompson is, like, jumping up with joy right now. And they, Finally! <laughs> I know, right? I mean, dude, this guy had so much inflated ADP toward the end of the draft season. So, for some good reason, but I always thought it was a little bit too much. But... Now these injuries come in, and you're going, oh, okay, it all worked out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know it is nailed like, it. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, we'll see what happens. Okay. You know, everybody who drafted him in the sixth, seventh round, if not higher, is good. Just, just gonna go nuts on Twitter on Sunday if he has a game. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, I think Darwin Thompson is worth a pickup if he's still somehow out there in your leagues, but. Uh, I probably will not start him because you just don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. Um, McCoy was a limited practice participant today. Nice. Okay. Uh, So Sterling Shepard for the Giants is expected to return from his concussion. He was clear today. Josh Jacobs dealing with a groin injury. Questionable for work three. He was limited in practice two days in a row. So probably a good sign that he'll play. But, you know, that's always kind of a worry with groins. Like, I mean – groins, hamstrings, calves, any of those, you know, muscle injuries, you know, they can just pop back up real quick, you know. Um, the Eagles, man, they got a couple, and, and you mentioned this earlier, um, Jeffrey, Alshon, and Djax, both looking like they're not going to play this week, man. Jeffrey's got a calf strain. Sean's got a groin, although I originally heard it was an ab strain, but now it's a groin strain, so I don't know where the hell that came from. Uh, so, yeah, yeah man, no, that's, that's a big blow, man. That's a big blow to Wentz this week, honestly. Um, you know, Aguilar, dude, oh, I, even I felt it for you. I was like, AJ just cursed. Like, I've never heard him curse at the TV when now Sean, when Aguilar dropped that damn touchdown pass. <laughs> on, on Monday I'm night, so dude, so off the deck. I was yeah. like, "Nope, I am not calling uh, AJ right now." <laughs> no, it was well, and it's like, okay, well, fine, this is a thing. It's whatever, and, and then just to give up that that play to Jones. I mean, good for him because he's 
just been this scapegoat, you know, and, and the Eagles were his kryptonite because two years straight, mm-hmm. he could not get it done. He could not get the ball in the end. And I think they threw it to him three straight damn times. And, and he still missed it every time. Those were so, terrible passes, though. I know what you're talking oh, they about. Were. Man. Those yeah. were all really, and they were all forced. And the Eagles knew that was happening, too. That's yeah. the thing. So. But that's the thing. It's like, but, yeah. okay, well, cover me. Okay, fine. We'll cover you enough so Matt Ryan throws a really crappy pass and you can't get it. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I was, I wasn't happy to see that. I was, I, I understood what it meant to him. But, um, yeah, it was horrendous. Um, I, I do think that that actually saved my ass, though, in uh, a best ball league that I'm in that's like a knockout league. Oh, nice. So I'm still trying to figure you know, best out if, ball if knockout I'm... knockout league? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. All right. That's um, it, there's like 256 teams or something, so you do a two-week matchup. And then whoever wins moves on. Oh, and then, interesting. Right. Yeah. So I think that ended up helping me win, but I, I'm still trying to figure out if I'm actually still for sure in it. I, <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell. Um, so I need to figure that out. All but right. uh, yeah, these injuries suck. Uh, I mean, th- that game was just brutal all around. Yeah, Everybody it wasn't, was just it wasn't that around. good, man. The Eagles started off real slow, but yeah. So, All right, so the last couple of injuries here, James Conner, we mentioned knee injury. Um, he says he's good to go. I guess he has his own radio show or something in, in Pittsburgh uh, that he does on Mondays. We'll see. I, I, I'm not really sure. Again, I mean, if he plays, you're probably starting him because it's James Conner. But it's you're probably not feeling super good about it. Uh, and then Marlon Mack, he has yet to practice this week, and that is troubling. So uh, I know us on on our Slack within Fantasy Six Pack, we all like saw that news and went in deeper leagues. Go out and get you know Jordan Wilkins, and I promptly did. So yeah, uh, yeah. Well, Again, I wouldn't be starting Jordan Wilkins, but you know, no, there's I, no information on this injury. We don't know how serious it is, but like Mac could literally be out for weeks and we just don't know yet. So that's one of those things where when you hear this type of news, if you've got garbage at the back end of your bench, go get their backup, go get their replacement. Cause you never know. Yeah. And, and I think the other thing for this is it, it, everybody is pumping up uh, Wilkins you know, Naheem Hines is still technically the number two back uh, in Indy. He wasn't really even anywhere to be found on uh, last week's game. But according to the depth charts, he's the number two guy. And he still is on ours, but oh, yes. Wilkins is is there. And if, if Mac doesn't play, it's going to be a split between the two of them. Um, so, you know. I just, it's just hard to trust anybody from Indy right now as it is. Well, yeah. So Nine Hines, his role won't change. That's that's yeah. the thing to know. But but Wilkins will be the primary ball carrier, for what it's worth. So, all right, man. So we like to we like to do some Scott Fishbowl waiver talk here every week because uh, we are both happily in it, although maybe one more than the other of us. Yeah. At this point. I, I'm, Although I'm, I'm cashing happy up to be in it. I'm just. I, I got. I got. Makes big me cry ben, when I look so at my team. I know. Uh, <laughs> I, I've got Big Ben, so that hurt big time. I did not land Mason Rudolph. I, I'll be honest. Like I kind of, I kind of played. Yeah, you know, I played the the game of chance, right? So I, I went. At, I looked at. I looked at my entire league, my twelve team league. I looked at the teams who are desperate at risk quarterback and i went how much fab do they have left the two teams that i thought for absolute sure would go after it were a team that had 43 dollars. they lost breeze and only had one other quarterback and so i went okay i've got more than them i'll absolutely put 44 dollars. there was another team and i forget their quarterbacks uh, but they needed they des- they looked like they desperately needed another one and i said okay so they'll probably put one on. They had $55. So I put $56 on Mason Rudolph. 
A team who had like four quarterbacks went out and got Mason Rudolph for $73. And I was like, really? Okay. So I do not have Mason Rudolph. I am now stuck with um, Watson and Keenum, who both have the same bye week. <laughs> Uh, That's going to suck in week 10. So I have to cross my fingers for more quarterback injuries before week 10. We've got, I'm sure it'll happen. Uh, at this rate, yes. And the entire yeah. league will be hurt by week or 10. Or somebody might um, drop someone. Yeah, I I've don't know Ryan why you would. But... I've got Ryan Fitzpatrick, who just lost his job, who Josh Rosen, thank yep. you very much. Yep. Not that he mattered anyway. <laughs> and then um, I did snag Kyle Allen for six bucks. So who knows? Like I, you know, I was like, you know what? Cam's injury might be really bad. We just don't know yet. I'll throw a few bucks on Kyle Allen, see if I land him, and I did. So not that I'm hoping Cam Newton gets hurt, you know, and it's long term because I think they're bad for everybody, and you know, but maybe I'll luck out with Kyle Allen if that actually happens. But let's so go back to Mason Rudolph. He was a ninety dollar average ad. So th- I guarantee you that's all the Big Ben guys just going 100 bucks or whatever they had left and just flying in. Nah, not in mine. Um, uh, the guy that got him um, had Nick Foles already injured. He had Dwayne Haskins, Lamar Jackson, uh, Lamar Jackson, and he had Trevor Simeon, who he picked up last week for, I guess, a $0 ad. Um, and then he went out. They obviously lost Simeon. So he went out and put a hundred bucks down, got Rudolph. Ooh. Every everybody, like all the quarterbacks that have been picked up, you know, for the bigger names have been hundred dollar ads in my league. Yeah, they're crazy. Man. Uh, Minshew, uh, Minshew might not have been a hundred actually. No, he wasn't. I don't yeah. think. It's interesting. Um, Got to give props to Richard again. You know, dude, he ca- he called it. Two he weeks ago, him last week and got him for like two I, he was books, like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm gonna put something in on on Rudolph and on um, who the hell was the other one? Uh, Allen, I think he was talking no, about I think Allen he got Greer. Or the other he got in Carolina. Yeah, he got Greer, but there was t- there was another quarterback that he was talking about. Uh, I forget now, but anyway, like, the know. fact that he got Rudolph for like two bucks like a week ago is just silly. Um, I was pissed that I didn't follow suit and get him for zero dollars. Uh, I mean, who knows, man? Like, because I such now a have random ad though. Like, it's just... yeah, it's a spec ad. <laughs> right, exactly. It just so, totally pays um, off. T- so let's let's touch on the two Saints quarterbacks. Um, interestingly enough, like Taysom Hill was only added in forty-seven leagues. I'll tell you why. He was added in a bunch of random leagues in week two. Yeah, I have no idea why. Like, literally, no idea why. Like, to be honest, if Drew Brees is healthy, and why would we ever think Drew Brees is going to get hurt? Taysom Hill plays like ten snaps a game. Even in the Superflex League, Taysom Hill is probably still not better than other flux players that you can put in his place. I did not understand why people were just going crazy over Taysom Hill. Um, Superflex was just making them, you know, lose their minds because he had the quarterback status, but it didn't matter. If he had running back status, he had no value. No one would have added him. Um, But Teddy this week, Teddy Bridgewater goes for $45 on average, 76 ads. I'm guessing he was owned in a bunch of random places. And I, I, yeah, I picked him up after week one, just, after because I lost luck, so I was like hedging my bets by picking him up and I picked up Drew Locke. Um, I guess, man, like it's just so I, well, I don't know. I, I would have gone after like, the injury prone guys, but not. <laughs> not well, I had Flacco injured. already, so I'm like, if he goes down, I need his backup. Um, yeah, I don't know if Locke would be locked out. IR, he's out man. for now, yeah, but yeah, so. Uh, another interesting one here, a guy that you drafted, right? Will Disley, $22. Yep. Uh, he's added in 13 leagues. I, I put a bit on I didn't draft him in, in Fishbowl. Uh, I drafted him in our best ball or somewhere. Oh, but yeah, I was, uh, I was laughed at repeatedly for probably four I rounds. I think you were laughed at because of where you drafted him. 
Possibly, but look at him now. He's a stud. Mm. Stud? No. But okay. Two touchdowns, bro? Come on. Uh, stud. Okay. How many <laughs> random tight ends do we see do really well? Uh, Mercedes Lewis he's, from about four years ago. He's not a random ago. tight end, though. I'm going to remind I mean, you of Mercedes Lewis from about four years ago when he caught two touchdowns in like week three and then was absolutely it, nothing the rest of the game. Whoopity shit. He's Mercedes Lewis. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, he, All right. He ain't no Benz. But All right. you got you got Disley, who was a solid player he was before he got injured I'll, last I'll year. I'll give it to you. So, you know, had that injury not happened, who knows where he would have been. You know, he was a spec draft. <laughs> I, I feel like we're mocking Richard at this point. <laughs> Richard, I'm no, not mocking no Richard. Dude. All right, uh, last one here. We got. I already talked about Kyle Allen. He's ten dollars. Um, got Evan him for Smith, zero. 11, 11 bucks. Um, again, I, I'm not sure. I'm buying like spending eleven dollars on a on a on a wide receiver that you probably are not starting. And in two to three weeks, four at max, Gallup's back, and what does Devin Smith do? Yeah. I, I don't know, man. That's a, that's a weird one to me. Um, you know, again, I, I mean, I spent $6 on Allen because I was just like, you know, you never know with Cam Newton. He's always kind of banged up. He misses random games. Who knows how bad his injury is. I kind of am desperate for a second, well, Really, a third quarterback, but hey, at any game, the Redskins could do what the Giants did and just bench Keenum, and there you go with Haskins, right? So then I'm out another quarterback. So all I'm left with is Watson, and we all know how Watkins is. Uh, Watson is uh, injury prone, so I'm like, I just threw some dollars at a quarterback. I'm probably gonna have to go pick up some, you know, random backup quarterbacks and just, you know, play roulette at this point. So, yeah. All right, man. Let's finish up here with our week three picks. And uh, see if I can catch up with the slides here. All right. I already missed one earlier. Suck at this. Uh, <laughs> the highest, low scoring game. I'm not even game. watching it tonight. I usually have the pain nah, up with dude, it. I missed, I missed the entire quarterback landscape one. I feel bad. Keith, I appreciate your work, but I suck at this. We need you back. Uh, yeah. all right, stop going to the mountains, weirdo. <laughs> stop going on vacation, man. Thursday <laughs> yeah. is the best day. Um, Ravens Chiefs is my highest scoring game. I mean, it's actually not the highest over under, I don't think it was, but Mahomes versus Lamar. I mean, just enough said, man. Both these guys are it's incredible right now. Uh, I don't know how long Lamar is going to keep it up, but this Chiefs defense isn't great, good, so. <laughs> I'm looking for just a, a high flying game at this point. What you got? Uh, I'm looking at Houston at the Chargers. Um, I mean, Houston obviously week one, you know, was a was a letdown in the end, but it was a great game. You know, the offense was clicking; it looked good. Um, you know, Carlos Hyde is actually really coming into form um, as their leading back. Um, Eckler has been nuts. Yep. Uh, he's been very Mel- Melvin Gordon esque. So I, I can see his, you know, running ways continuing. I just think it's going to be a, a good matchup between two playoff hopeful teams. Um, so I, I really like it early in the season, too. And Derrick Henry just gets in the end zone, one yard run. So 17 7. Jaguars. All right. Fourth All quarter. Right. Beginning of the fourth quarter. So we'll see if the Titans might come back here. All right. So my lowest scoring fantasy game is going to be Broncos and Packers. I mean, it's weird. Like, you know, you look at the Packers, and even though they're playing the Broncos, you, you think, like, you know, it's Aaron Rodgers and, and all these guys, and, and, and they're just going to figure it out, right? But it's just not happening anymore. I mean, Last year, you know, we thought it was coaching and just the frustration and maybe the knee injury or whatever it was, right? It's just, but this year, like, he hasn't been great either. Um, it's almost like, like this past week, you know, he kind of started off hot and then it just, like, they took the foot off the pedal. And I don't really know what happened. So, uh, and obviously the Broncos defense, maybe not as good as it was a few years ago, but still pretty good. So I'm just not feeling a lot of, a lot of points out of here. 
So, you know, I mean, Broncos offense is meh. And the Packers defense yeah. look way like much improved from the years past. So this just looks yeah. like a like Pack, a low Packers do game. have a defense again. So yeah, it's crazy. It's real, real good this year. Yeah, I'm going. Uh, I'm going Cincy at Buffalo. Um, we already talked about Singletary, obviously, and Gore. You know, Gore could be helpful to a team, but he's not going to blow you away fantasy wise. I don't think. Um, and then since he, I mean, the, the receivers have been great, you know, and Dalton's been, been solid. Um, I want to say that uh, Mixon, you know, he's been kind of, kind of banged up. Mm-hmm. So he, he's fallen off a little bit. Um, hopefully he can pick it back up. I just, I don't know if this is the game that he'll be able to do it in, you know, Buffalo's defense is still, Fairly decent in my mind, at least. Yeah. No, so. No, they've been good this year. Yeah, and and playing at home, you know, I feel like that that gives them a, a bump up. But overall, I think it's just going to be kind of a, you know, maybe like a seventeen thirteen game or something like that. Yep, that was one of my other ones I was looking at. So it's a good one. All right, so off to our sleepers here. Uh, so again, for sleepers, we kind of put our own little. Um, restrictions on who we can pick and, and so we're trying to use the fancy pros half point ppr rankings at the time of, of recording this and we're looking at um you know we're looking at for sleepers guys outside of the top 14 quarterbacks the top 30 running backs and the top 40 receivers for the week so my sleeper quarterback is going to be jimmy g um you know, he looked real good last week. I know it was heavy running back, but, you know, Debo got in the end zone. Um, Moster got a, a, a touchdown pass. Um, and Pittsburgh is second worst in passing defense, according to DVO, DVOA. So I'm looking for Jimmy G to, you know, possibly finish within the top 10 again this week, man. Yeah, I could see him having a pretty good game. Um, I'm going to go with, and I guess trepidatiously, uh, I'm going with Matthew Stafford against my Eagles. Um, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, he just seems to put up good numbers against them. Um, Back in 2016, in week five, he only had 180 yards uh, of passing, but he had three touchdowns. Um, and, you know, threw in another 16 yards on the ground. Um, and then I'm trying to find the game. I think it maybe it was 15, but he absolutely destroyed Philly. Uh, yeah, it was in, in 2015 on Thanksgiving. 337 yards, uh, 27 of 38, five touchdowns. Um, so I don't know, you know. This, I don't want to say this is a trap game for Philly, but wouldn't be surprised if Detroit really gives them a hard time, especially without you know D and whatever. But that's going to start with Stafford. Kind of agree with you there too, man. Uh, and in fact, on the uh, the Balls Deep podcast that we've got on the on the YouTube channel here with Dave Eddy and uh, Bert Fink. They do some DFS talk. They uh, they like Stafford for their for their DFS lineup. I think he's very cheap, and uh, they like the matchup. So yeah, pick there. It seems like uh, my running back is going to be Carlos Hyde. I mean, look, I don't think anybody's expecting like a gigantic game out of Carlos Hyde ever anymore. So the upside isn't there. But I mean, in a ton of carries and. Um, you know, just a very safe floor, man. Like, that's all there really is to it at this point. So, um, you know, you, you can't go wrong. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm flipping back to the San Fran page and going with Mostert. Yeah. I mean, I, I like this guy coming into the season. I really liked uh, what I saw out of him in preseason games. He just got the ball and took the hell off. I mean, he's just, he's very dynamic guy. I feel like dynamic's the word of the night for me. So I'm throwing it out there again. Um, 
and we saw it last week. I mean, he got the receiving touchdown. I think he gets at least one more touchdown this mm-hmm. week, maybe two. Um, but yeah, I, I like Mostert. Cool. So my receiver here is going to be Miko Hardman. Uh, I mean, your guess is as good as mine is which Chiefs receiver is going to blow up this week. You know, week one was was obviously Watkins. Week two was Robinson. Week three, why not Hardman? He got in the end zone. They gave him a little taste. Now they're going to give him the buffet, right? Let's, let's yeah. have him do it. That's all I got. I like it. <laughs> I, like, yeah, I was like, and... a shot of dark, man. Like, what else? No, I like it. Um, I uh, I had a guy listed, but I just realized that he's the same uh, same team as most. <laughs> but go for it, man. Right. Whatever, no I'll go with it. it. I'm going Debo. Debo. Debo Samuel, baby. Um, I, I mean, this guy's just he's just put up numbers so far he's this week good, man. or the season. I'm sorry. Um, I, yeah, I just I I think he's really becoming you know a a safety net there for jimmy g Mm -hmm. so i think this could be a good game for him again and um you know he's got eight receptions on 10 targets 104 yards and a touchdown that's only gonna keep keep getting better so let's go debo all right i like it i like it uh so moving on to bus here we've got baker mayfield I mean, look, I, I know he threw for 300 yards, and if you just look at the box scores again, this is where I said box scores lie. 300 yards. He had a gigantic pass play to Odell Beckham Jr., which inflated that. And other than that, though, man, like, Odell ba- or Baker looked pretty bad. He missed open throws. He looked rattled. He just was, you know, he seemed like he was always trying to, like, Almost like he was trying to be like Aaron Rodgers, like he just kind of like always had to like always had to bounce out of the pocket before he could make a throw, right? Like it was just stupid. Like yeah, he was just making throws. He wasn't throwing to open guys that were like right in front of him. He always had like almost seemed like he was trying to force the big play. It just wasn't working. So yeah, you know, honestly, until he can prove to me that he's just going to settle down and play quarterback like he should, uh, he's going to be a bust for me for a while. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, there was so much hype coming in with Cleveland this year and, and with him alone. I, you know, uh, maybe he's buckling under the pressure. I don't know. But mine is uh, going to be the guy that you mentioned that he's trying to be like, and that's uh, the original stash, Aaron Rodgers. Um, I mean, Rodgers just hasn't been impressive yet this year. I mean, he's uh-huh. only got – uh, just over 200 yards in both games. Um, I mean, he's had 30 plus attempts in both games, but his completions are down. Uh, he's only got three touchdowns total. So, you know, he lost a fumble last week. Granted, he's been playing his divi- division opponents too. It's kind of rough to start the year with back to back division games, but, mm-hmm. you know, Denver, I don't feel like is going to pose. A major threat to them, um, you know, and they're playing at home. Man. They're playing at home, but yeah, Denver's defense isn't a pushover either. So, I just don't like Rogers this week. Nope, I agree with you, man. Um, so my running back is going to be Devonta Freeman. Does anybody realize that this guy has two point two yards per carry right now? I mean, when are we going to be screaming for Edo Smith because uh, he's been way better off like yeah. a third of the carries. So, yeah. That's all I got to say about Devonta Freeman. He's been bad. Moving yeah. on. Yeah, I'm going with a big name here, Mr. Saquon Barkley. Um, part of my reasoning for picking this is because Tampa Bay was able to keep uh, Christian McCaffrey in check. Again, granted, some of that was because of the injury with Cam. Um, but I CMC just looked a little lost as well. Um, plus, you also have Daniel Jones starting in his first game, so I, I think Saquon's going to be a, a bit of a safety net for him uh, in the passing game with some checkdowns. But mm-hmm. you know, he could get bottled up running wise. So PPR, he's he's still probably going to have a pretty good game. Yeah, he, he'll pull a Le'Veon Bell last week and get ten catches and just 
carry you that way. Yeah. Um, my receiver's going to be Amari Cooper, and I know everybody's going to be like, what in the hell are you thinking? They're playing Miami. Let's be real, though. I mean, unless he scores super early in this game, Dallas is going to get up by, like, 30 points by the middle of the third quarter. They're just not going to use Cooper. I mean, why would they? Um, so, yeah, this is, this is a Zeke game, and then probably easily turn it into a Tony Pollard game. It's, it's yeah. They could pull their starters in a heartbeat. So I think so. Um, so my my receiver is uh, somebody I kind of alluded to earlier. Um, if you remember, I don't know, three hours ago, uh, Michael Thomas. I am down on Michael Thomas this week until we see what this two-headed uh, quarterback machine is going to look like. Um, I have more faith in Kamara and even Latavius Murray. Um, I mean, I think Thomas will still get looks, but he just didn't seem to mesh well with, with Bridgewater. So yeah, I'm Bridgewater not struggled to throw the ball downfield. Man, he really did. Yeah. Unfortunate. So, so I agree with you on that one. I mean, our defense here. So we look to get, we look to pick guys here who are 40% owned or less. And we, we kind of use Yahoo as, as our as our starting point here. I'm going to go with, and you kind of hit it on the head, man. You kind of already said this. I'm going with Detroit. Like, look, I mean, let's be honest. There's really not a lot of good streaming defensive options this week. If you look at the 40% or under, it's bad. Um, yeah. So, I was like, oh, man. Yeah, okay. no, it was, it was rough, man. I was well, like, this will be fun. I was like, Pittsburgh? Man. Indy, hell no. Uh, <laughs> it's bad, man. Yeah. So I went with Detroit, who, you know, shockingly are 11th overall in DVOA, 17th best according to Pro Football Focus. And they are going against that Philly offense, who have lost, probably lost their two best receivers for the week. Uh, the running game has been non existent. So. You know, Darius Slay, all he's got to do is lock down Aguilar. <laughs> or or maybe those throw him on Ertz. Hands and then he got nothing, right? nothing. I don't know, right? Just let him run down the sideline open, and he'll just drop it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to Detroit. Just, be like you know, thinking, oh. Todd Pinkston. He used <laughs> to call him alligator arms. <laughs> all right, man, what you got? Uh, I'm looking up. at Arizona this week. Um, yeah. I can see Pretty that. favorable matchup with Carolina in general. Um, and, you know, if Cam doesn't play, then they could struggle on offense again. Um, their their offense, the Arizona offense, has been able to move the ball at least. So they've given the defense time off of the field. And I think that's mm-hmm. very important to keep that going. Um, this could be a good game for, for Kyler Murray finally. Uh, not that he's been bad, but you know, if he can keep that offense moving, keep that defense rested, when they get out there, they're gonna they're gonna, you know, wreak havoc on whatever quarterback's back there. Even if it is Cam, he's still obviously beat up. So Yeah. I, I like I like the Cardinals this week. Cardinals are a uh, an interesting one. I did kind of look at them because of the Cam Newton situation. I also sort of looked at Tampa because you said like you know they haven't yeah. been terrible, right? And they do get the Giants without uh, you know or with Dana Jones for the first time. And I'm looking at the chart here that Keith put in the the, the slides, and he's using Tyler Thompson's uh, Streamomatic article um, stats, and and I and I'll say we use Yahoo. Tyler uses ESPN ownership percentages, so they're slightly different. So, like, you know, you see, like, the Eagles are at 48%. Uh, the Lions are at 3% in this one, which is lower than Yahoo. Um, so, it, it obviously is different in every league. So, you know, don't just use our streaming pick here. But, you know, if there's a better defense out there. Clearly go get them. Uh, and I highly recommend to use his art, Tyler's article. It is phenomenal, and he puts a lot of work into it every week. So, um, I mean, that's all we got. So, score right now is twenty to seventeen. A seven and change left in the game. This looks like the Jags are going to take it unless we get a a, 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 a 
big rally back from Tennessee, but that seems doubtful at this point. So, all right, man. Uh, you got anything else to add? No, that's it. All right. See you all next week for uh, some week four prep. See ya.